or at least lots of robot motion. Hi, and welcome to the SEO podcast, <laughs> Unknown Secrets of Internet Marketing. My name is Chris Burris, owner of eWebStyle. <laughs> I'm Charles Lewis, so internet marketing especially. Thank you guys for tuning in. You have just tuned in to the most popular internet marketing podcast on iTunes. That is because of all you, y'all. You, you, you right there, you who just logged on, thank you for tuning in. And uh, if you need a translation for all y'all, that means <laughs> all, all you guys. guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is podcast number 169. As always, we have uh, a tip from our previous podcast, which, if you can do the math, was 168. The tip is reevaluate your SEO strategies to recover from algorithm updates. Definitely. You want to make sure that you're not applying the same SEO strategy and principles that you were doing Unfortunately, six months ago, eight months ago, a year ago, Google is constantly updating the algorithm to target links and to target exact match domain names and bad content and things like that. And so if you are still doing what you did before, then uh, you need to change. Remember, we are your friendly local neighborhood top position snatches. Where our mantra is... Don't be a douche. Do not be a douche. Actually, that is referenced in one of our uh, reviews or things we'll be reading today. Um, If you are in in front of some sort of electric device that enables you to tweet, please tweet right now. You want to tweet. Hashtag SEO podcast. Matter of fact. Look at that screenshot. Yeah, hashtag SEO podcast 169. Then tag us in it at eWebStyle. And um, that way we can link up, network, and check you out. You can check us out. You can do us one small, one of two small favors or two of two small favors. That two would give you five stars. <laughs> okay, go right. ahead. Proceed. Both. Uh, <laughs> you can go to iTunes. You can create an account. You can write a review. Yes. That's one way. If you want, this is optional. Send us an email. Podcast at? e style. No. I missed up. You got me. Boom. <laughs> it's been like e six months. <laughs> E-webstyle.com. Uh, so that's podcast at e-webstyle.com. Yeah. Let us know that you yeah. wrote a review. And we'll... You got uh, me. <laughs> I, I, I saw you over there Call tweeting. me distracted. Yeah. Um, that was kind of cruel. Uh, so you can actually let us know that you wrote the review, and we'll give you a punch in the face. Patif. Patif. The other thing you could do is you can go to e-webstyle.com slash... G+. Plus. Which G plus, Chris? Hey, Chris, thanks for asking. <laughs> Any G plus. G plus, I'm making the cross symbol with my fingers now, or G plus, P L U S. And uh, you'll land on our Google Plus page, not surprisingly, and right there you can write a review. Uh, you do need to have a Google account for that. Uh, I think most of our listeners probably have a Google account. Actually, if you don't have a Google account, send us a. Shame on you. And by the way, Google, Google I mean Gmail. Um, send us an or email. No, not really. Just Google. Does it just have to be? You're right. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. if you're on Google Apps, that's a Google account. Yeah, there you go. Um, we have uh, a, our normal feature that comes and goes, the algorithm cataclysm. <laughs> so, so do I have to shake if you... If, probably not. I'll right. shake and then you do the... When you okay. do the... Then we're shaking the camera. Gotcha. By the way, it's an amazing special effect. If you have yet to see our videos where we do an algorithm cl- cataclysm, you got to check it out. Yeah, it's like the most amazing, cheapest special effect you could ever see. But um, so they <laughs> they did a, uh, they did the EMD update. Um, again, EMD is exact match domain names. This happened um, three days ago. And so what the whole purpose of the refresh, which was similar to like the Panda or Penguin refreshes, was to kind of capture the sites that didn't really get captured or filtered during the first release of it. And so they did an update, um, typical Google standards, you know, uh, this shouldn't affect but 2% of, of search queries. So we'll see how that works. Now, what was interesting before we move on, um, I read an article and the guy was saying that technically all domain names are exact match. Then he went on to say, because for example, if, um, if our domain name is eWebStyle.com. So if someone goes and searches eWebStyle, we're exact match. That's an exact match. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and Interesting so, point. Exactly. So he was, he was wondering how Google was going 
he to thinks, differentiate that. Yeah. He thinks the real MD update was really targeted towards spam and low quality sites that happen to have a keyword rich domain name. Yeah. So we'll be paying more attention to that to see what's what the EMD update is really targeting. That's an incredibly interesting point. Yeah, they're all exact match. <laughs> they're all exact. If you're, searching, if you're searching for that URL, to yeah. be sure. All right, we have a, um, is everything good with our video feed and everything? We're good? Oh, okay. Is it back up? All right, we have a, um, we you, no tear? Yeah, you see I, there's I no tear. I was happy. Hard. I thought I said, ooh, good. He no tests today. <laughs> Uh, the best content, here's the title of the review, this is on iTunes, the best content of any SEO podcast, bar none. Bar none. Five stars. Uh, Five this is star. by Lucky Cat 13 I have listened to your podcast for over a year and have gone through every podcast you have done. They are wow. always informative, always, always relevant. In all caps, by the way. Always very timely. In an industry that changes by the second, I am up to date on the latest algorithm cataclysm. <sighs> Sorry it takes me so long. I don't know how he squeezed that special effect into his review. That was impressive. Uh, sorry it's taking me so long. <laughs> sorry it's taking me so long to write a review. Uh, you guys are entertaining and educational. A big haymaker. Haymaker Ugh. punch in the face. Wow, that's what's up. Best, uh, David Nelson, Baltimore, Maryland. All right, David, yeah. Appreciate Boom. you, man. Punch in the face to you. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for the support. Thanks for the review. Um, so hit us up, man. If you if you're watching this and and it's informative, it's keeping you up to date. You must do SEO or probably manage some sort of website. Send us some links. Let us check out what you're working on. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we've got a little bit of news. Uh, iPad Mini is released today, I think, today, tomorrow, something like that. They were talking about in Manhattan, of course, because of Sandy, uh, people, well, with some number of people will be riding bikes to go pick up their iPad Mini. Um, I don't know if you heard about this. Apple was forced to take down a tongue-in-cheek apology that they made to Samsung. 20, uh, it, it, so here, I had to read it because it's, it's so tongue-in-cheek. Basically, Samsung in Germany sued and the penalty that Apple had was that because because Apple was saying that Samsung had copied the iPad mm -hmm. uh, and this is the Samsung Galaxy tab. Mm -hmm. And so the German courts ruled, OK, well, Apple has to post an apology on their home page to Samsung to for, Samsung. Really? Yeah. And here is the, uh, the apology, <laughs> the apology, the informed users overall impression of each of the Samsung Galaxy tablets is the following. <laughs> From the front, they belong to the family, which includes the Apple design, but the Samsung products are very thin, almost insubstantial members of that family with unusual details on the back. Mm -hmm. They do not have the same understated and extremely extreme simplicity, which is possessed by the Apple design. They are not as cool. <laughs> in a case tried in Germany, an this is a court-ordered apology to Samsung. <laughs> It, it, it sounds more like a, a just smack it's in the face, yeah. yeah. In a case tried in Germany regarding the same patent, the court found that Samsung engaged in unfair competing competition by copying the iPad design. A U.S. jury also found Samsung guilty of infringing on Apple's design and utility patents, awarding uh, over one billion U.S. dollars in damages to Apple Inc. So while the U court, U.K. court did not find Samsung guilty of infringement, other courts have recognized that in the course of creating its Galaxy tablet, Samsung willfully copied Apple's far more popular iPad. Maybe it, maybe it was the U.K. courts that forced them to, to uh, put this apology. Wow. Um, uh, apology. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I just thought that was actually wow. worth reading. Um, I like that one line that says it's just not cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's just not cool. We apologize for the Samsung not being cool. Yeah. That was, <laughs> we're offended because you copied us and we're cool. So how can you copy you, us and not be cool? Yeah, if, yeah. yeah, you should be way much cooler if you copied us. And the courts have ruled that you actually have copied us. Um, remember, you can follow us. <laughs> Facebook.com slash eWebStyle. Twitter.com slash eWebStyle. YouTube.com slash eWebStyle. And you can email us, podcast at e-webstyle.com. Uh, on our Facebook page, Gary Troy Miller, I thought this was really good too. He goes, uh, he, he posted on our Facebook page. I love the show. I've been writing reviews at all of your social media pages and giving you five stars. I really enjoy your podcast. Listen every day and refer you to all of my friends and clients. 
So mm -hmm. where, so where is my punch in the face? It reminds mm. me of my childhood all over again. Mm -hmm. Remember when that lady on the old show Romper Room? I do remember this. Would show. come out at the end of the show with her little magic mirror, and basically it's a picture of her looking through this magic mirror, and she would say, "I see Bob. I see Stacy. I see you, little Billy." <laughs> So, Gary, I would be running around my living room, waving my hands in the air, shouting, and Don't short of lighting the sofa on fire, I would do everything I could do to hear that douche say, I see Gary. <laughs> yeah, Gary, I'm sorry, Dow. I'm sorry she didn't see you, man. Whether I get my punch, yeah, I do know a really good therapist who can help you through this. <laughs> Seriously, check him out, patrickwanish.com. <laughs> and that's a great story. Whether I get my punch in the face or not, I am learning a lot, getting great content, and really having fun while learning. And don't set any sofas on yeah, fire. Yeah, I just want to make that. Learning from you both. So I give you, uh, give your show five stars, and each of you kick in the shins for not saying Ouch. hello. Ooh. Ouch. <laughs> I can't I will hello, dog. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Thanks, guys. Yeah. We see you, Gary. Yeah. <laughs> um, last two pieces of news. Google Wallet may be coming in a card, not mm -hmm. just associated with a phone. I think that's a great idea. And uh, I just need to open it up to more banks. Yeah. I would use it if it if it would if I could link it with Chase. If you could use it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and Square, I read a really interesting article uh, about Square. That's the little mobile device. Payments. Yeah. yeah, mobile payments. Um, about how good uh, of statistics they keep and how it's helping businesses actually, you know, project sales for, yeah. you know, what they do last Thanksgiving, what they're going to do this next Thanksgiving, what they do over the holidays, um, what were the best-selling products, how many they sold, etc. And, um, hmm. and I thought it uh, poignant because you recently got the, the, the PayPal, PayPal device. Yeah, mobile device. So it's pretty cool. Tried it. It yeah. works. Easy. Money went right. How much you make? It was, um, I sold two CDs. Oh, cool. So, 20 bucks. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, so it uh, worked out pretty well. It was, it was easy to use. But what, what, one thing I noticed is that you have to establish uh, a line of trust with the person. Right. Because at the end of the day, I'm some guy who's about to swipe your card on my phone. Oh, yeah. You see what I'm saying? Luckily, you know me, and you like my music, and we had this relationship, so you don't mind giving me your card. Right. It does say PayPal, too. It says PayPal, but I, can, I have access to your, your info. Well, I, you probably don't. Actually, I'll, I'll, I'll lay money on it that you actually don't have PayPal access to PayPal gives me the cards. option to swipe it or type it in. Now, you're probably uh, right. I probably as soon can't. As you type it in, it's gone. Yeah, like, I probably can't go back and get it, um, which I haven't tried. I have no need to. But you, you could have a keyboard recorder and some record sort the of, phone number. Yeah, yeah, yeah so that's, there is some, there's a line of trust that has to be established in order for that to work. And, um, it, I mean, it's, it's useful. And you, apparently you crossed that line yeah. to the tune of 20 bucks. Booyah! Who <laughs> was my aunt, though? So. <laughs> Yeah, if, you, if that didn't work. So, so where are we going shopping? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, because there's a couple of CDs I'd like to pick up. <laughs> okay, cool. All right, that is the potatoes. Let's get to the meat. Yeah, so we want to talk today. Um, um, I want to talk spend some time about Google Plus um, because Google Plus is 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 constantly growing and it's constantly changing in different facets. It's changing from a from a social perspective. Like you realize that the search engine results page does not have the plus one buttons anymore. Right, right. You know, so they're they're changing how I'm saying right, but I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you go and search for, you know, SEO rapper, right? You would get a long list of results and then beside each result you had the option to push plus to plus one it. Right. Before you even clicked it. Right. Right? That option's not there anymore. Um, so that's one way they're changing Google Plus. In regards to the Google Places and local deal, that's a whole big mess that we covered a few podcasts ago about going from a Google Places page to a local Plus page. Still Google Plus related. So today I want to talk about um, Google Plus in regards to SEO. How can you use your existing Google Plus page to help your current site rank? Um, the article I pulled from um, SEO Moz, a great resource, um, 10 dead simple tips to take advantage of Google Plus for SEO. By, by the way, a comment about punctuation. Um, it's, it would be a bad article if there were a comma after dead. 10 dead 
Yeah. Simple tips, too. <laughs> <laughs> I think I would have chosen another word than dead. Dead. Yeah, 10 dead simple. Yeah. <laughs> I, I feel you on that. Yeah. I didn't even realize that when I clicked it. So maybe not. I don't know. Because I saw it. But anyway, so um, <laughs> so the debatable. article talks about some tips you can use to help use your Google Plus to help um, um, enhance your SEO for your site. So number one, he says, uh, follow your profile links. And so, and what that means is, he's, he's talking about your other social profiles. Because one of the things that's happening is that Google is, is, is doing, you know, live search and things like that. The problem is, all the agreements aren't quite figured out. So Twitter has an agreement with Bing, for example, but the agreement with Google is still up in the air. Bing already has an agreement with Facebook, and Google and Facebook kind of love-hate relationship, right? And so, when you search... I don't care if you only use Google Plus once this month and you use Twitter 10 times this month and you use Facebook every day. If you do a search for your name, the first result you'll see is your Google Plus page. So they are, they are purposely highlighting your Google Plus. You right. should use it. Follow the, the, the number one tip said follow your profile links. What does that mean, Chuck? That means when you set up this Google Plus page, make sure you link to your Twitter. Link to your Facebook, link to your LinkedIn, link to your YouTube. Every social profile you have, make sure you have it listed there. Why? Because Google allows you to. And then you can kind of pass some juice that way to get those a little bit more visibility. Build up some credibility. Definitely. Yeah. Trust factor like we were talking earlier this week. Um, number two says uh, embed post links. This is awesome. And unfortunately, I only found this out probably a few months ago editing my Google Plus page. On your description page, you can embed links with anchor text in HTML. Oh, wow. And it passes juice. Oh, wow. So, so in our description page, I'm about to go update it <laughs> with, with our target services, and those will be links to our pages on our website. Why would I do that? Because Google Plus rankings show up higher than Facebook, Twitter, and everything else. And so if somebody's searching for that and they happen to tag our name, well, first off, our our page should show up, yeah. right? Our <laughs> SEO Houston page yeah. will show up. But in the event that our Google Plus page did show, those listings would be there. So embed your post links. Um, number three, optimize your G Plus title tags. So anytime you create a post, right, um, you uh, a new um, um, update or whatever it is, the title of that update becomes the title tag for that search result. So make sure that you optimize it. If you're, if you're gonna include a link in that update to a blog post you did, use the blog post as that title, right? Or maybe one of the secondary key phrases that you wanna target or something like that, but definitely take advantage of the title tags. Uh, number four, which is pretty cool, the unlimited um, editing power. That's what he called it. And, and it's true. One of the differences is, um, for with Twitter, for example, if you create a post, and you post it, you send that tweet, that's out there. Right. You can't do anything. You can delete it, that's it. With Facebook, they give you some editing capability a little bit, yeah. but not so much. With G+, you can edit the whole thing. So let's say um, you create a post and it goes viral and people are seeing it. You have the opportunity to go back into that post, maybe add a CTA, maybe change up some verbiage, At maybe put in your URL, put in yeah. add a phone number, things like that. And 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 you don't have those sort of features and um, and tools with the other search with the other tools with the other yeah. profiles. Social so, uh, media, yeah. Yeah, what he said. So <laughs> um, so take advantage of that. Um, number five, this one was pretty cool, and we knew this would happen. Um, it index new content lightning fast. Right, so you know, part of our standard process is, uh, you know, you build a site, you put this page up, you want to go get your sitemap re-indexed and everything else, get it submitted. Plus it. Yeah. <laughs> if you plus <laughs> one it and post it, it will likely be indexed faster than resubmitting it. Yeah. Just the way it is. Connect with influencers. This is kind of like um, guest blogging and things like that. Anytime. You can link yourself up with people who already have a brand, already have an influence, especially in your industry, then that gives you more power, gives you more trust, gives you more, more influence. So, so link with um, influencers. 
And then he put some sub points here. How can you do that? Mention them in the post. Um, share a post with them directly. Um, share a post in the circle that they're in. Take advantage of those circles. We don't talk a lot about Google Plus circles, and I think that's because they're still trying to make it work right, but um, that's a great way to share information with a certain set of people. Um, tag them in a photo. Um, comment on, on posts that they've made and begin to build that relationship. Um, I like number seven. Number seven is really key right now. Um, optimize your author pick for more traffic. Right, remember we were just talking about author tags yeah. and things like that. And so what the author tag does is on the Google search engine results page for the listings, if you're the author of that post, then it'll display your, 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 your G plus avatar right next to the post. Well, if you have a bad image, I mean, right. it should be a real good professional headshot. Yep. That's what it should be. If you have a bad image, then no one knows who it is. Or Nobody knows what it is. It's the cover of your favorite album or yeah, whatever it is. Like that, then, you know, no one knows it's you, right? The whole Arthur tag is to build um, relevancy and establish branding. And so you need, you branding yourself. And so use a, a great image for that. Um, I like number eight, test drive G plus on a social media dashboard. So if you're in um, Google Analytics and you have all your social profiles linked up, then run that query, look at that report, see how effective it is, and then more importantly, compare it to what you're doing on Facebook and Twitter. So if you have an article, for example, that you posted on Facebook and it did well, generated a lot of comments, got a lot of feedback, got you know shared plenty of times, then you should take that same article and, and do it on G+. And give it that same push that you gave it on Facebook, and then compare the results. Facebook will likely have more action because right. it just has more users and more people using it. But um, if you get some action on G Plus, then it's, it's, it's worth it. Um, number nine is um, check your circle rank. What is circle rank, Chuck? I have no idea. <laughs> um, his new tool, his favorite new tool, is Circle Count. So this is probably something he built, frankly. Um, he's promoting it here. I'm not sure. Um, so he has a circlecount.com. Check it out. Tell me what you think about it. I'm going to check it out too. Um, but what I think circle rank, we're talking Google Plus. So my assumption is that this is going to rank the power, your power circle. Right. How many people you have in your circles, what type of influence they have, and how have you influenced him? Right. You know, and so your circle rank, right? Right. Chuck, that sounds like a great estimated guess right yes. there i'm yep. gonna run with it <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm with i'm on board okay and, and last but not least uh number 10 be an awesome early adopter what does that mean that means it's not too late to start only one in four people actually log into google plus once a month wow that's worth repeating only one in four people actually log into google plus once a month wow. and it's growing fast so so you know take the time to use it go ahead and set that page up Start using it. That same time you dedicate to Facebook and Twitter, copy and paste it over there. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of douche like. Matter of fact, I think a few podcasts ago I said you should use. Yeah, you should definitely not do that. Do that. I think, uh, <laughs> but, but repurpose it, right, is what I'm saying. Is if you put some content on Facebook, it's probably useful for your G Plus users too in a different way. Facebook people share stuff, like stuff, comment on stuff. G Plus people research things, investigate things, and try to solve issues. Twitter people just look at stuff and comment, right? So you can take the same content and repurpose it for each profile right. to make it useful. So um, do that. So yeah, be it don't. It's not too late to start. So that was it. That was the ten things you could do with Google Plus to help your SEO. <clears throat> I think one thing to keep in mind. Dead simple things. Yeah, dead simple things. <laughs> I think the um, the one thing to keep in mind is that. Um, with the Searcher World Plus algorithm update that happened earlier this year, um, that Google Plus is not going anywhere. It's only going to become more bigger and, and more <laughs> yeah. Yeah, used, you know, for what you have to do daily on the Internet. They do have to fix a couple things. they so got to fix a lot of things. You Google Fixer Plus Fixers <laughs> out there that are listening to the podcast, mm -hmm. we get into Google Plus and we try and search mm. for companies like our own clients and the search tool is useless. Man, like, I would make. Are you outsourcing that search to Bing or something? Ooh, because it's useless. <laughs> <laughs> and so, but I think the key is some of the things they need to fix. For example, would be 
um, the combination of local plus pages and personal pages. So as a business owner, I have a Charles Lewis page, but then I also have um, a Poetic Profit page, I have a, uh, a SEO rapper page, right? And so if you search for Charles Lewis, and it's clear that those are my pages because I'm the only manager, shouldn't they all show? You, matter of fact, shouldn't e -Web Style's local page show because yep. I'm also an admin on that page. And a, and a it, contributor, yeah, right? Yeah. But it doesn't. You have to take a thousand clicks to find it all. Literally, to find our client, we had to search them in maps and then click, you know, one review to get to their G Plus page. That's ridiculous. Yeah. That's just bizarrely ridiculous. So, so yeah, Google kicking the shins for that. Yeah. Whoever so, the Google Plus fixer is. I got some little bit of blanks there. Got this, all right. Actually, a lot of bit of blanks there. <clears throat> oh, let me change. Let me get two blanks. This is. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of like the head too. Yeah, that was kind of cool. Like the subtle head shift there. So first Google, first blanks there goes to uh, goes to Yahoo. Marissa Mayer. She released a statement saying, Yahoo is not going to focus on local search. <laughs> They're not doing any search anyway, aren't they? Aren't, isn't everything? Just, uh, that goes without saying. Right? She, she went on to say that her comment said, you know, all Yahoo is still coming to Yahoo. Search is their biggest thing. Um, Ms. Mayor, no, it's not. People don't go to Yahoo to search. They go to Google to search. People go to Yahoo for entertainment news, fantasy football, and or check email if, if you're like my wife. Other than that, people don't go to Yahoo. Well, and I can promise you, if your goal is to have less people go to Yahoo, then don't focus on <laughs> don't local focus search. Don't focus on local search, exactly. 43% <laughs> of all searches are local. Uh, that's, wow. Yeah. 43%, well, that's almost half. Well, that, you know, maybe she's trying to focus on the 57%. <laughs> Let's just wipe out. It's not worth investing in 43%. It's such a small percentage yeah, compared to 57%. Sound like Romney. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> I didn't mean to go there. <laughs> uh, okay, and the, the other blank there was to um to Windows 8. Did, did you have you seen it? Uh, so Windows from 1995, you've always given us a start button. Yeah. Windows 96, 97, Windows ME, Windows 2000, Windows XP, Windows 7. We have a start button. Yeah. Now, I looked at the Windows 8 desktop the other day, I didn't even know what to do. Yeah. I thought it looked kind of sleek, kind of cool. It looked like, let me tell you exactly what it looked like. I don't know if you ever worked fast food before, but the, the screen, yep. <laughs> that's what it yep. looks like. Yep. A whole bunch of buttons you can push to place an order. Super simple, super easy, except uh, it doesn't have anything that I'm used to. Well, yeah. it would be great for a tablet. Robert had to Google to find out how, <laughs> how to, to shut, shut it down. down. That's yeah. one of the guys who works here. Had to Google how to shut down my Windows. By the way, he didn't use Bing. He used Google <laughs> to find out how to shut down Windows 8. That's not smart. Yeah, like that's a huge change. Like, also ultimately, was it easy to, when you figured it out? Or? I just thought it was cool, oh, yeah. but it but it's not it's not user friendly. Yeah, yeah, it'd be different. Like I said, it looks like it was built for touchscreen. Yeah, but all these little tiles and, it and is, things actually, that they do talk about that it is built for touch screen. Yeah, so. but but that's not a touch screen. That's yeah. a desktop. Yeah, and it exactly. uses the mouse, and that is really not intuitive for the yeah. mouse. So yeah, the Windows 8. Yeah, that um, was that, yeah. If I I would have been blanker if I knew that's <laughs> that you're going to talk about. All right, I, I did want to read these. These are two things from our oh, uh, from Twitter. From Twitter. Uh, let's start with this one. This will be a good way to uh, to end the podcast. This is. Uh, this is from Geeks on Call, SEO podcast, Eddie Webstyle. Listening to your podcast, you guys are the best SEO professionals. Punch in the <laughs> face to you, Geeks on Call, appreciate it. And Turkey Face. This turkey Face. Turkey Face 77. <laughs> 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 it's late, but listening to the eWebstyle SEO podcast 163, more enjoyable than free internet porn. That is our <laughs> new tagline. <laughs> <laughs> More enjoyable yeah, than free. free internet porn. I think we're gonna put that on our homepage. Yeah. Who was that from? That was this turkey, turkey Face 77. Turkey face. Wash your hands. Yeah. Turkey face 77. Wash your hands. And your keyboard. Yeah. <laughs> 
All right. You have been tuning in and listening to the most popular internet marketing podcast on iTunes. Yes. That is because of all of all you. We really appreciate you. You guys. Hit us up, facebook.com slash twitter.com slash youtube.com slash email us, podcast at e-withstyle.com. Find our G plus page at <laughs> you're supposed to say ewebstyle.com. Oh, ewebstyle.com slash Google Plus. Nope. G plus. I gotta add that one. Yeah, G plus. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I'll add it. I did it for our client the other day. I know, I, yeah. I thought you did it for G plus or G plus. And then soon to be Google Plus or Google Plus, and one of those pluses is the symbol. Um, yeah, thank you guys. <laughs> thank you guys for tuning in. You have been listening to the most enjoyable, than more enjoyable than free internet porn podcast known as the SEO I don't podcast. Know if I be for that, though. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm the white dude standing next to the SEO rapper. Just go with it. All right, all right. <laughs> all right my name is Chris Burris. I am Charles Lewis. Bye bye for now. <laughs>